Welcome to the Keep Baseball Great podcast, where we're all about reminding baseball fans why they love the game. In today's episode, we get to talk with Clint McGill, who's a former professional player and now owner over at BaseballNotes.com. In today's episode, we get to talk with him and we get to hear some really cool stories uh, of him meeting some former professional players as a kid, uh, bus rides with teammates, and also just a real cool touching moment with his dad. Uh, These are all really cool moments in baseball that has shaped the way he loved the game. So without further ado, let's hear Clint. Cool. Well, hey, Clint, thanks for uh, joining me on the show. We're uh, super glad to kind of have you on and uh, talk with you. So, uh, but before we get uh, get into the questions and uh, ask you some things, give me a quick rundown of uh, who you are personally and, and also professionally. Uh, okay, so my name is Clint McGill, and uh, I'm a dad and a husband. I've got three kids. Uh, my son's 10 years old. I coach his youth baseball team and uh, two daughters younger than that. And uh, I am the founder of Baseball Notes, which is a online, uh, mostly confidence training for kids. And uh, the, the big struggle we found is not so much their swing path or anything. These kids do well in games, but they struggle. I'm sorry, they do well in practice, but struggle in games because they get too nervous and they're hard on themselves. And uh, giving them some tools to use whenever they feel that sort of you know, anxiety rise has really been helpful for them on the baseball field. So that's what I do uh, at Baseball Notes. And uh, formerly, I was a professional player, um, played, you know, in high school, college, I went to junior college in Fresno, um, nearby where I'm from, and uh, went to Texas Tech and Loyola Marymount, and then finished up with a little bit with the Astros. So played a little bit of minor league ball, and then uh, got into the work world for a little bit. And, uh, then, you know, a few short years ago started baseball notes and that's, that's what I'm doing now. So. Sweet. Well, uh, yeah, I love what you're doing with baseball notes. Kind of why I had you on. It kind of fits a little bit into what keep baseball great is all about. And, uh, so we're really all about, uh, these kind of five things that, uh, I believe, uh, if you kind of do, you like really love the game through those. So the first one is just kind of knowing the history Second one is uh, just experiencing it with your family and friends. And then uh, third is just the life lessons you get to learn through, through baseball. It's just really cool. Um, fourth one is giving back, just the opportunities that present itself for you to be able to give back, whether it's through baseball or, or other things. Um, and the fifth one is just having fun. Uh, the game is fun and, and fun to play. So through those five things, I got five questions for you. It'll be real quick, uh, but I'm interested to hear uh, some stories and your feedback on those. So Yeah, let's do it. I'm excited about it. So awesome. fire away. All right. So the first question uh, is on history, but uh, give me some of your favorite baseball historical moments. And these can be, you know, MLB, they could be personally, but something that uh, historically kind of impacted you. I gotcha. Um, yeah, so... Growing up, I was from Chowchilla, California, which is right there in the Central Valley, kind of near Fresno, like I said. And so that was a big San Francisco Giants uh, territory, right? And so growing up, going to Candlestick Park, that was the ballpark they had before, you know, AT&T or whatever they call it now. Uh, That was like, we'd go there once, maybe twice a summer. And that was like my Disneyland. You know what I mean? (laughs) Like that was like the pinnacle for me. And so um, for me, you know, going to those games was incredible, but from a historical standpoint, uh, the whole Barry Bonds era, and I know there's all that controversy, you know, people don't like Barry Bonds and, you know, yep. took the steroids, whatever, but watching him hit uh, as a kid was just like, whatever means necessary that it got him to achieve that uh, was worth it in my mind, because I've never contemplated a human being being good at anything or as good as anything as Bonds was during that little window uh, where, you know, he was getting one pitch a night and he was driving it over the fence. You know what I mean? And uh, the year he hit 73, me and some friends, I actually think it was just two of my buddies. uh, I think we were almost in high school at this point. And uh, we went to the new ballpark and he hit 53 and 54 the same day. It was a day game against the, uh, I'm sorry, the Marlins. And, uh, that was like just incredible to watch. I think they walked him, you know, like, like, uh, <laughs> two at bats and he hit right. two home runs, you know what right. I mean? Hit two, right. <laughs> yeah. Hit went two for two with two bombs and, uh, went on to, to hit 73 and, uh, you know, we can all go, I mean, it's pretty clear what, what happened. He, I guess admits that he took the steroids, just didn't know he took the steroids. So we know right. how it happened, but I mean, so many people did that and could get to like 40, which is incredible. And yeah. so to watch him work during those years um man was just 
on a whole nother level of 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 hitting like it yeah. was just like i like i've never he made it I don't look think easy. we'll ever see it again yeah yeah he made it look easy for sure um i had a friend who uh i think it was when he, the night who's supposed to break the record i think he was able to to go out to san fran and be at that game he was even like one section off from the home run or something it was crazy oh wow but uh yeah i remember that i remember those times those are really cool uh just even the home run chase with like um, Sosha and McGuire. Um, and, you know, you're right. The asterisk kind of on that is kind of tainted a little bit, but it was fun, fun time in baseball to watch. Oh, it was sure. so exciting. It was like, yeah, I mean, that was, you know, that was the formative for guys like us. I'm 38. And so, I mean, Bonds, I'm, uh, McGuire and Sosa's yep. chase was just like check the paper every morning you know what i mean or yeah. like you know we didn't really have the the twitter so much but like where are they today where are they yeah. today where are they today like it was just unbelievable and uh you know it, it is what it is with how it went down but it was fun like there's no denying it you know what i mean yeah. I, got, I got nothing but love for those guys so yeah for sure well that's awesome so with your answer it kind of goes into the second question uh just being able to experience those games with your friends and going to that but uh sharing baseball with family and friends is a big, big thing that, that makes it great. And so do you have any like real fond memories with either your family or friends, like you said, that uh, you're just always think back on, man, that was a, a cool time uh, with them through baseball. Yeah. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, there's, there's, you know, hours worth of uh, little stories I could tell, but the, uh, you know, the thing that I always go back to, and with all due respect to my mom and my brother, uh, my dad, you know, mm -hmm. me and my dad, uh, throughout my baseball journey, personally, um, it, it was me and him, you know what I mean? And um, I remember specifically, you know, because he coached me like in t-ball and all the way up through, you know, seventh grade or something okay. like that. And uh, I remember going out for the freshman high school team and uh and I was very small all right so I was in this little town called Chowchilla and uh I was like I was like the the worst combination for a kid at the time <laughs> I was very small I was like three years late to hit puberty and I was like very young looking you know what I mean so like right. I was a freshman in high school and people probably would have guessed I was a sixth grader something like that oh, um so like I was okay and everything but like just physically I was so behind and I didn't know if I was going to make the team. And so I remember being in the garage one day, like uh, everybody was about to eat dinner and they went to check on me and I was crying in the garage. I was just so stressed out, like that cut day was coming and I didn't know if I was going to make it, you know? Oh, man. Yeah. And I remember my dad, uh, you know, came in and he was just so surprised. Like he didn't realize that my mindset was in that spot, you know? And uh, so like a few days later, it's cut down day. I think it was a Saturday, right? Cause my dad was there to pick me up. And so, um, so I go and I check the roster and I'm on it. Right. And so I'm like, I'm like, Oh wow. Oh my God, what a relief. And so I walk out of the locker room and to, there was this chain link fence between me and my dad where he was parked. And so we're probably about 90 feet away, about a home to first type of distance. And he's got his window rolled down and we make eye contact and I just kind of <laughs> give him the thumbs up. You know what I mean? That's awesome. He does like this big hand clap. Right. <laughs> and so I walk, you know, and I had to like walk around this long chain link fence and walk back to my dad. And, uh, and his eye, like he kind of had like, like, like oh, he had wiped man. tears, you know what yeah, I mean? Like, yeah, like he awesome. was just like, he knew how important it was to me. And, uh, and like that's happened. I mean, I didn't know, I didn't start until my senior year of, uh, of high school. And again, not at some like, you know, state powerhouse school. And, uh, the only reason I started was cause a couple of kids quit. And, uh, so me and my dad, I remember him throwing batting practice to me, uh, you know, at like in junior I was a junior in high school and he was terrible at it I still remember like <laughs> like the only time I feel like me and my dad really got in an argument was like dad I've got to oh, have BP. better strikes than this <laughs> yeah and like that was like That's his awesome. first time where he's like I don't know if I'm if I'm capable of helping you anymore <laughs> you know uh but just like that that you know how much he invested in me mm. and uh, and cared throughout that entire experience was uh you know every every step along the way I've got a couple of stories about me and my dad like you know, he was right there with me throughout all the ups and downs. And, yeah. you know, like baseball, it's almost all downs. It really is. It is like, it is all downs. And like, so, uh, you know, having somebody there to go through that with you is like, you know, pretty special. So that I always think of my dad as far as like the, yep. you know, every moment I had, my dad's involved somehow. So that's really cool. I, I love that. 
it, it's funny as I'm kind of go through this stuff, I, I, in watching movies too, uh, there's like three of my favorite movies and they all end with playing catch with dad. And yeah. uh, I just think that's like real iconic, you know, not everyone has a dad, but they always have somebody hopefully to throw baseball with. And, and you know, it's kind of, real symbolic for me. So I, I love that story. Um, oh yeah. All those movies I, I, I break down too. Like I, I remember my dad cried at the natural. I remember being like, oh, my dad's my not favorite. a crier. My dad's not a crier. And then like, you know, uh, Hobbs was like, you know, my dad wanted me to be a ball player. You know what I mean? Yep. Like there was that dad yeah. scene and then he was playing catch with his boy <laughs> at the and, end. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And the field of dreams, like, I'm like, all right, I'm gonna go, um, you know, clean up the garage when that scene comes along with people around. Yeah. You know what dusty. I mean? so, it's dusty. Yeah. Yeah. It's a little dusty <laughs> in here. So, so yeah, there's something about it. Yeah. That's really cool. So uh, again, a- along the lines of that answer you just gave me, the, the third one is life lessons. Uh, and I know with baseball notes, uh, that's probably a huge part of that too, but uh, give me some life lessons that you have either learned and with your kids and your team that you're uh, teaching with them that, uh, that kind of suck it, stick out to you. Yeah. I mean, the, again, so many, and I think all team sports kind of, you mm. know, ha- have their, well, all sports in general, the individual and team and what have you, but, um, but baseball specifically, I think with just how much failure is involved yeah. is um, just really beneficial for kids to go through that and to kind of have a safe environment to fail, if yep. so to speak. And um, just to realize that, man, like you look back on the end of the season, you're like, man, we had a great year. You had a great year personally, you know what I mean? And, but while you're going through it, kind of felt like you were struggling the whole time. You know what I mean? Like, right. I, I, like I said earlier, like it, it's almost all outs, it feels like. And then you look up and you're hitting, you know, 350 or something and you got that one game where you went four for four, which was an awesome day. You yeah. know what I mean? Like yeah. there's literally like three or four days that like really stand out where you were killing it. And the rest you were kind of grinding. And yep. so I think that's really been helpful in life um, where you kind of know that like success isn't just like this constant upward swing, you know, and uh, just like right now we're dealing with this virus, you know, deal. And it's like, look, like there's things like this are going to happen. Every generation kind of has their yeah. things and we're going to work through it. Right. And it doesn't feel like success at any, in any stretch right now, but like, just keep, keep grinding you know what I mean yep. Yep. and uh, and so I think kind of being more composed I think that's a that's a very common trait I see of guys um, who are like get to college and uh, and beyond is that they're they're just sort of like even in like daily settings just seem sort of like chill if that mm. makes sense and I think there's sort of like this uh you know, you don't, you, you can't just ride the roller coaster and now I'm worked up because it's something happened and now I'm really sad because it's, it's something else happened, you know what yeah. I mean? And, and, uh, there's kind of like this more even keel that, um, even if you don't feel it inside, you can kind of project that, you know what I mean? And I think yeah. that's really valuable is to kind of have that, um, you know, that quality. And I think baseball teaches that, like you have got to like compose yourself a little bit. You can't go so deep because it's just, you just, you know, there's just so much more to do. That's not what success looks like. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. There's tons of things like that, that I I preach to my, my kid and then I turn around and and start working and I'm like, Oh man, that really just applied to me, you know? So a thousand percent. Yeah, exactly. uh, Right. Yeah. yeah, So that's really cool. Uh, So the fourth one, uh, giving back, I know, especially like you said, in these times with, the virus going on. I'm seeing a ton of MLB guys that, uh, that have a platform. They're, they're using that to give back to community, to give back to uh, even the MLB, the, the people that are working in the stadiums that don't have work now. So it's just really cool to see a lot of the giving back. And, and that looks different, obviously, for us that don't have a big platform or anything, but it's a big part of, of keeping baseball great. So have you ever been a, a part of something like that where you're, you're able to, to give back or um, been a part of the, the receiving of that um, through baseball? Um, yeah, you know, I mean, I think that, you know, the, the guys who are well established in the game or well known or what have you um, have a stronger platform than what they realize, you know what I mean? Like, uh, you know, just, just even like college guys or whatever. I mean, uh, you know, not so much in the fact of like them giving back, but just like a compliment from somebody who mm. that you respect as like a freshman in high school and they're a senior yep. and they like just like spent some time with you. Uh, I remember like just being like 
that carried me for like days. You know what I mean? Thinking like, yeah. man, that that you know, the first baseman and he's the quarterback. The first, like he was like talking to me the other day, you know. And so like them being able to spend time with me, even if they're not like showing me how to do anything, um, was was really valuable. Um, like there was a story that. Um, Oh, I'm sorry, back when I was in junior college, it was kind of a pivotal time for me with um, with where I was as like my identity, right? I had always been like this underdog, the little guy, the grinder. And I went to junior college at Fresno City and um, and I was doing good. You know what I mean? It was kind of like, wait a minute, am I good at this? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> this is kind of like a weird deal. And uh, And I remember between my freshman and sophomore seasons, I got invited to a camp at Long Beach State. And Long Beach State was like, uh, they're still pretty good, but at the time they were like a top five, ten program. They had Tulowitzki there, Jared Weaver, all these big names, and oh, cool. Um, and anyway, they had a guy that had just been drafted uh, first, not, not first overall, but first round by the Oakland A's, named Bobby Crosby. Okay, and Bobby was the man, right? Like he's he was at this camp and he's walking around and everybody knows who it was. He had like this brand new Escalade. It was like the peak of what <laughs> a twenty year old kid dreams right. of you know what I mean this guy is like a first round pick driving an Escalade just the guy and uh and so I remember that weekend I had a really good weekend and um uh, anyway I my last at bat I hit this fly ball to the outfield I got caught at the warning track but I smashed it you know what I mean like I really you, in those situations you'd rather smash it out than like get yep. a you know broken bat single type thing <laughs> and I remember like smashing it and uh and anyway, I was rounding first and I got, you know, almost got to second. Oh, the guy catches it. And so I kind of peel off and I'm cutting right. Across. He's down at the end of the dugout at third base and I cut right in front of him and uh, he goes, Hey man. And I kind of stop and I start, I walk over to him and he's like, and he kind of looks cause all the coaches were in the first base dugout. Okay. And okay. he goes like, Hey, and so he kind of looks like he's looking over at those guys and he's like, Hey, are these coaches talking to you? And he's acting like he's almost going to like wave his hand, like get their attention. You know what I mean? Like whatever. And I was like, Oh yeah, you know what? Actually I have been talking to, you know, there's a coach named Dan Barbara and uh, Buckley or something over there. And I was like, I've been talking to them a little bit. And he's like, Oh, okay. He's like, okay, cool. And uh, no, he said, okay, good is what he said. Okay, good. And uh, right then somebody's dad came up, Hey Bobby threw his arm around him. And so me and him just kind of gave each other a head nod. And I remember walking <laughs> to like the bat rack and, taking my helmet off, putting my, my batting gloves in and just stopping for a second and was like, Bobby Crosby thinks I'm good. You know what I mean? <laughs> like it was yeah, just like this yeah. moment. And I almost felt like, uh, you've ever seen matrix where like the Keanu Reeves, character, Neo, yeah. like, where he like realizes that he's who he is, he's yeah. the one. Yeah. Or whatever. You know what I mean? That was like it for me where I was like, maybe I don't have to like try to keep tricking him here. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. All it was, and I mean, if you ask Bobby the next day what he had told me, he probably wouldn't even remember, right? right. Just the ultimate throwaway. And, uh, but his little compliment right there, which was, you know, uh, debatably a compliment, like kind of <laughs> changed my cor course of life, you know what I mean? So, yeah. um, so anyway, that's, that. you know, from the older guys kind of passing that down yeah. has, uh, has really impacted me. So, yeah, I, I know, especially with you and your, your son and, and even having a team like, a lot of guys just don't see it. Uh, a lot of dads or coaches just don't see it, but, but they're giving back a lot of time and a lot of effort to those kids. And that, that means a ton to them. Um, and even, uh, my daughter plays on, uh, uh, volleyball for her high school and just the way some of the elementary and, and younger kids look up to those players, uh, is amazing. And so they, they have an incredible voice, uh, and an opportunity to give back to those little kids just by, like you said, just a simple compliment, uh, can go a for long sure. way. So for sure. And I think all the coaches out there, like, I think that's a perfect point. Like the dad coaches who are thinking like, ah, oh, gosh, like I don't even know a lot about baseball, but I know enough to coach, whatever. Like you don't understand fully how these kids look at you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, uh, and, and how they're viewing you and just a small compliment. You just be shocked at, um, you know, what, what these kids really think deep down yeah. of like, Oh wow, this this guy, you know, he believes in me. He thinks I can yep. do it or whatever. Like, you know, something's gonna stick with you. They're gonna remember you twenty years from now and be telling them on their own podcast about some right. stuff that you <laughs> you built them up on just some random day. Yeah. And uh and and you know, just 
all the dads out there who are coaching moms out there who are coaching just to realize that uh, they kind of have that magic power of like, you know, telling the kid who they are so they can live into that. You know what I mean? For sure. For sure. I love that. So, well, cool. So the last one is uh, just having fun. I mean, getting to be able to play the game and even watching my son play the game. I mean, I just, I have a blast and I love it. So give me some of your uh, most fun moments that you've had playing baseball, whether it's current or in the past or whatever. Yeah, no, that's, that's great. I've got a few here. So let me, uh, I don't want to take up too much of your listeners time, here, <laughs> but, uh, but there's just so many. So the, the man that's so funny, like the ones that jump out are the ones that have nothing to do with baseball. Actually, it's kind of like the, the just being with your friends. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Like all, all these years later, you know, I don't, I don't, you know, pine to just go take some fungos and go play second base or whatever, but I do like miss my friends, you know what I mean? Yep. And, uh, you know, I remember playing cards on the bus when I was in the minor leagues and, uh, we were, you know, we had this kind of nicer bus, right? It wasn't like a school bus. So there was kind of like some spots where you can have like a table, table and everything. Okay. And where we had like a late game, I think we were in West Virginia and we had a late game that got over like, you know, 10 o'clock. So it's 11 by the time you're done and we're driving to the next city. So we're like, like not getting there until like 7 a.m. type oh, deal. Man. And, uh, and me and some friends played cards in the back the whole time. And uh, I remember just being like a cool time is one of those things like you remember back even now of like everybody's just kind of busting each other's chops and, yeah. uh, you know, playing cards. And uh, I remember, so when we get to that next town, right, we play our series there. And then we're like heading home back to Lexington, Kentucky. And I remember trying to sleep and people were uh, the coaches uh, was Tim Bogar, who was the first base oh, yeah. coach of the, of the nationals. Now he was our manager. Raleigh, Rodney Linares was the assistant coach. Uh, he was a hitting coach at the time. He's third base coach for the Rays now, I believe. And uh, anyway, them and the trainers all that, they were like hooting and hollering the whole time we're trying to sleep. <laughs> and I was like so mad. And I guess they were so annoyed by how loud our poker game was the, uh, the series before. And so anyway, just stuff like that. Like, so then everybody's kind of chirping back and forth. And uh, so, so those are the things that I think of more so than like, you know, my buddy hitting a walk-off bomb. You know what I mean? Like yep. those were so cool too. But it's always just like the, the, the dumb little stories of, you know, I remember my friend, he had like a bag of sunflower seeds. It was like David original and he was pouring me some. And, uh, I remember like, man, these are so hot. These are like incredibly hot. <laughs> I was like, he gave me the spicy ones, you know? Oh, man. And, uh, and then like I get some more from him and I'm like, man, these are spicy. And I realized he had taken the spicy ones and poured them into the David, you know, original uh, yeah. bag, you know yep. what I mean? Like just dumb stuff like that. Yeah. Or like you could just laugh at for, for so long, but, uh, um, I, I love that are, stuff. Yeah. And it, yeah, I know. It's just, it's, it's so funny. Just like the, yeah, I'll see our 10 year olds and they'll be quick to goof around and you know, the, the authoritarian in me or whatever wants to like, whip them, <laughs> Hey boys, we've got a ball game to win. Right, you know what I mean? Right. Like, dude, this is what they're going to remember yeah. is that, you know, EJ spilt his blue Gatorade all over his pants. You know what I mean? Like, that's funny. I, I'm <laughs> so mad at it as the coach, you know what I mean? And then it's like, it's, it's kind of hilarious, but yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, but I mean, as a kid, I mean, I think the most memorable moment for me um, as a kid was, again, not necessarily me playing, but it was my dad had a friend who they did the catering for the San Francisco Giants. And okay. like I told you, like San Francisco Giants were like the, you know, it was my world really. And uh, so he knew that we were Giants fans. And so he invited my dad and me to help him, uh, you know, deliver the roles or you know like kind of set out the spread they call it okay and so like we went to the Giants game and I had good seats and you know we're normally up in the upper deck we we're kind of down low and in the seventh inning we got to go down into the locker room and kind of get everything ready to set up and uh man I remember you know the Padres won they're playing the San Diego Padres and uh like I remember carrying like this roll, you know, this tray full of rolls and, uh, and like Bruce Hurst was the pitcher that night. It's funny. I remember these names still. Right. Yeah, and like, yeah. and a guy named Anderson, he's like a relief pitcher. I walked past their locker room and they're like, Hey man, uh, do you lose a bet to wear that, to wear the, all that stuff? Cause I had like giants hat, giants hoodie. <laughs> I think I had a giants watch, you know what I mean? I had like all of it. And, uh, I was like, no, I, you know, I, I, I just like trying and, you know, had a smile 10, yeah, 10 feet across. Right. And I was just like, no, I wanted to wear this, you know? 
and they're like, uh, oh, okay. And so they kind of got me in a headlock and I think one of them got my legs That's and, funny. uh, yeah. And I remember they had like free gum. They had like, just like those, these trays full of gum and, uh, and uh sunflower seeds and i was just like kind of pocketing all of it and trying you know what i mean it's just like it's just free it's unbelievable and yeah. uh and i remember as i left like dusty baker we were kind of like crossing paths uh he was a hitting coach for the giants i think before he was the manager oh, okay and uh and he goes see you later big man and he kind of hits my the bill of my cap you know what i mean That's and awesome. <laughs> i know and it's like 30 years later and I could like draw you a picture of what Dusty what, looked like <laughs> at that moment. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that's like the coolest deal. Uh, yeah. But yeah, so I mean, just being, you know, being at the ball game with your friends and and yeah. playing all the all the victories and stuff are cool. But uh, but yeah, my my friends and and you know family and everybody else, people, the people involved are really what what uh, is lasting. I should yeah. say. Yeah, we we keep baseball great. Made a T-shirt, but it's kind of a riff off the Sandlot. But it it says friends get remembered, but teammates last forever. And so yeah. you know, just the idea of just you remember your teammates and the experiences you get to have with them. It's just a lot of fun for for these kids and and for us that who had had played before. So yeah, there's something about working together with somebody for like a common goal and kind of rooting yeah. for each other. You know what I mean? Like there's just something that. Uh, you know, those shared experiences are the ones that are going to last. That's why, that's why it's so hard to replace like the high school friends and stuff, just to go from, you know, the, you know, your 10 year old self to your 18 yeah. year old self. And like, you just went through so much and it's like, you can't replace that. So I yeah. think the team playing baseball, like, yeah, just rooting for each other to do well, common goal. There's something, there's some magic in that. So that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, thanks for answering those questions. And it's a lot of fun. It's cool to hear stories like that. And just, uh, the love for baseball that we get to share together. So, um, but before we go, give, give the listeners, uh, just where can we find you? Can they, uh, see more videos or follow you online? Yeah, no, absolutely. So baseballnotes.com, just how it sounds. Baseballnotes.com is the website where um, you've got a lot of uh, resources. There's some free resources and uh, the programs that we offer there. Um, the Facebook page is where a lot of the activity is, and that's just uh, Baseball Notes on Facebook. And uh, we're on Instagram too, trying to do a little bit more over there. So give us a like there. But yeah, all the socials, Baseball Notes. And um, yeah, the website, baseballnotes.com. So sweet, man. Well, hey, I appreciate it. And uh, hopefully we'll chat soon. All right, Drew. I appreciate it, man. All right. Well, thanks for tuning in to our interview with Clint McGill. Appreciate you guys hanging around. Be sure to uh, like us on social media. Uh, hit the little subscribe button here, wherever you're listening to. And uh, check out keepbaseballgreat.com. Appreciate it, guys.